Welcome to beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. My name is Sarah Curry and this is my husband, Will Curry. We work for our family's business, Hydrovane International Marine. Will and I have actually just returned home after sailing our own boat, HydroQuest, 8,000 nautical miles across the South Pacific, with our Hydrovane steering us 99% of the way. Today we're going to show you how to install a Hydrovane on your boat. In this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, considerations and preparations for doing an installation. Uh, we'll also uh, run through the whole process of mounting the unit. Uh, we'll go through the final inspection test. And finally, we'll touch briefly on the maintenance of the, of the system. Let's head down to the boat. Here we are down at the dock. I'd like to introduce the good sailing vessel Cora Jane, a 1980 Cal 39, on which we're going to install the hydrovane today. Now, all hydrovanes are shipped factory direct from our production facilities in Nottingham, UK. So here are the boxes. Uh, because we are using a standard vane in this installation, we've got four separate boxes. There'll be one box for the vane and the rudder. We'll have a second box, which is the main box where the drive unit is packaged. In the drive unit box, you have the H bracket, which is one of the mounting brackets. You have the tiller assembly wrapped in this cardboard. You also have the lead counterweights, which are packaged separately underneath the tiller here. And it's very important that you do not throw the box out with the counterweights inside. Uh, we've had a few peak customers come back to us and say, we've got our unit installed, but there's no counterweights. And what's happened is they've thrown out the box with the counterweights inside. So make sure you get those. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, manual, the hydrogen manual. So full, complete instru instructions. Uh, it's also detailed on our website, hydrovane.com. Uh, definitely good bedtime reading to go through the instructions. And finally, we also have the packing list, which details everything that's in all the boxes. So you want to go through the checklist and make sure you've got everything. The next box is the shaft assembly box. This is an L shaft, which is a 58 inch length overall. Uh, two things to note in this box. One, the rudder locking pin is uh, in the bottom of the box, so don't lose that. The second thing to note is you want to make sure that the shaft tube spins freely. Uh, sometimes during shipping, the shaft can get bashed around, and what can happen is the collar comes loose and there's a space here. Uh, you need to bang it back in place so that there's no friction in the system. The final box is the bracket box. Uh, here we've got both an A bracket and an E bracket. One thing very important with the brackets if you look at the bracket itself, there's a plastic sleeve inside. Each bracket has a sleeve. Make sure that when you're doing the installation, you either tape it to the bracket or keep an eye on it because if you lose it, uh, it's gone. And we do end up shipping a lot of these to people during the installations. The thickness, or the width of the uh, collar itself, the sleeve, is very critical. It's machined to a precise thickness uh, and it's not something that can easily be duplicated. Every installation has an H bracket, which is the hinge bracket. That was shown in the drive unit box. Uh, you will also have a second bracket, whether it's another H bracket, uh, it could be the E bracket, or it could be the A bracket. We identify which brackets you need ahead of time. It's an uncharacteristically hot and sunny day here in Vancouver, so to save Will and I from squinting any longer, I hope you don't mind if we put our sunglasses back on. Now there's a few other things that you're going to need uh, for your installation that Hydrovane does not provide. Those would be the mounting bolts, the timber pads or spacers, backing plates, and PVC tube if you want to use it as a dummy shaft. Now first of all for the bolts, you're going to need either four or six of these mounting bolts. We recommend that you purchase either metric 10 millimeter bolts or non-metric 3 8 inch bolts. With regard to the mounting bolts, you want to keep a few things in mind uh, to determine the length of the bolt that you're going to buy. Now, you're going to have about half an inch for the mounting flange. Then you may well have a, quite a small or large timber pad or spacer. Then accommodate the thickness of the transom of your hull, and finally the backing plate. So that helps you to decide what length bolts to purchase. The next component is the timber pad or spacer. 
Uh, the purpose of the pad is basically to pick up any contour difference between the flat flange and the contoured transom. Uh, these are also used for if you want the unit to sit slightly further aft to give you rudder clearance. Uh, we can supply ones that are made of teak, uh, but they don't have to be teak. Some people will use uh, any UV resistant plastic such as starboard or uh, UHMW. Uh, in this particular insta installation, we're going to use that. And then you also need a uh, backing plate. So this is a stainless steel backing plate, 316. Uh, you could also use aluminum or marine plywood that's epoxy coated. Uh, basically, you just want to use something that's good and strong and is going to spread the loads out. And the final component is the uh, PVC tubing, which we use as a dummy shaft. Uh, it's 2 inch OD or 50.8 millimeter OD. It's the same as the shaft assembly and the bracket tubing. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for finding vertical and aligning the unit. You can also use it as uh, dummy tubing for the struts. So you can cut the plastic strut first, make sure you've got the right length, and then cut the actual stainless steel tubing. It's optional, but it does make the installation a lot easier. So let's go over the installation here on Cora Jane. Um, we had a number of things to consider. Uh, we decided to do an off-center mount uh, for two reasons. One, we've got this very nice functional swim ladder uh, that we want to be able to use. Secondly, we want to make sure that the rudder has rudder clearance between the hydrovane rudder and the main rudder. And the main rudder on this boat, the Cal 39, comes right off. So what we're going to do is offset it so that the rudder has clean water. Um, when you're doing the installation, what you want to do is you want to mount the H bracket first, which is the hinge bracket. In this case, it's going to be on the lower part of the transom. Um, then you want to align the shaft so that it's vertical. Uh, we want to, this is actually one of the most important things with the hydrovane installation, the shafts align vertically. So it needs to be vertical on a fore and aft basis and also on a side to side basis. Although Hydrovane doesn't do installations, uh, we always make sure that every boat gets the right configuration for the transom. Uh, we have a long list of installations that we've done and chances are we probably have records so we can look up and at least get an idea of what's been used. That being said, every installation is different. Even the two of the same boats won't necessarily use the same configuration. Uh, because the Hydrovane is not tied into your main steering, we can pretty much fit any transom, whether it's a double ender, traditional transom, sugar scoop, drop down transom, uh, we can do it all. Uh, the only limitation would be displacement. So if you start to get up above, you know, 25 ton displacement, then you're starting to push the limits. Um, it's interesting to note that actually 60% of installations now are mounted off center. Uh, an off center mount has zero effect on performance. Uh, we did a lot of tank testing at the University of Southampton to make sure that this wasn't an issue and it just isn't. Um, and that's a big feature of the Hydrovane that it can do that. Uh, basically if there's any questions or you know you want to know what what needs to be used bracket wise and shaft wise, uh, we're always an email or phone call away.